So I want all of us to stand up and give a big round of applause to Ashok and uh, Krishna and Claire. And, and I, I uh, personally think that uh, if organizations like Ashok's, um, you know, work towards such transformation, uh, you know, that, you know, 5% number he's talking about, including the IITs and IISCs, will get towards the 20% number, and, and we want it to become 50%, right? I mean, that should be our, all of our goals. And I personally believe each of us can do something um, you know, with, with whatever little we can, based on the call to action that Krishna told us, we should, we should do our best. Um, when Krishna asked me about, uh, I think I got to know Krishna through the network. As you know, I'm um, um, involved with Thai. How many of you are involved with Thai in this room? So I see yeah, very small numbers, but I'll put a plug in for Thai. Thai is uh, an entrepreneurial organization started 26 years ago try to uh, foster entrepreneurship uh, for, uh, you, know, you know, it started with people of South Asian origin and uh, very recently, a week ago, we had, a uh, couple of weeks ago, we had the Tycon that attracted 5,000 people. It's, uh, it's phenomenal. The organization over, o has grown over the years. Um, and uh, somebody from the Thai network came to me and said, AGK, with your given role with Thai, what can you do for IUCEE? -E? That's how I got to know Krishna and uh, Claire. And that was uh, exactly, uh, you know, I guess back in February or something like that. And then they requested me to be a speaker here. I, in return, asked them to participate at the TICON or TINFLECT, which we changed the name to TINFLECT this year. And, uh, you know, they had phenomenal engagement from the community. I think uh, 150, 200 people actually stopped by their booth and, uh, and got to know about IUCE. And, and, uh, and in today's uh, attendance reflects that also. So... Thank you very much. So I'll just share, uh, you know, my own journey um, uh, till date and how, um, uh, you know, entrepreneurship has changed me as an individual, right? But before I get down to that, I want to know how many founders or entrepreneurs in this room right now? That's very, very good. How many executives are there in the company? That's very small. And how many educators are there? Oh, a lot of them. So I guess, uh, uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the audience. I just wanted to get a sample of what it is. In my case, I was fortunate to get uh, involved in a computer company very, very early on, and that too with an entrepreneur in India. Uh, is, uh, you know, Pondicherry, as you know, uh, in Tamil Nadu is uh, home for this international community called Auroville. So a lot of people from around the world come to Auroville with, you know, their own interest to come and acclimatize into that community. One such person is Andrei, Andrei Vyazit. Uh, Andrei had uh, started a uh, couple of companies. Uh, you know, first, I think a bunch of people from Auroville together created something called Aurolec. And those of you in the computer industry in India would know about Aurolec. And then, but for whatever reason, they separated and he created Pragati. And uh, you know, I was fortunate to get my job over there. That was my starting job. And that gave me a very good overview of what a com how a computer company is built. You know, I was put in, uh, I guess maybe that's how uh, French, uh, you know, uh, fresh college students are hired and then acclimatized. So I uh, got involved doing in manufacturing, design, customer support. My eventual job was in the customer support, but I got to work in all aspect of uh, that company. Later on, my first uh, like sort of feel and touch of entrepreneurship came from him you know, riding with him in his Peugeot car, you know, these are all, I mean, for a guy who didn't know, you know, never had a car or anything like that in India. So it was a very, uh, you know, uh, fast car he drives and he always talks about passionate, passionate man. And that was my first sort of, uh, you know, inroads into entrepreneurship. Hey, this guy is running two companies at that time. Uh, he was running a leather me area measurement uh, product company and a computer company. And I got to see both of those very, very early on in my career. So that was the foundation for me. Then I worked, of course, with uh, large entrepreneurial companies like uh, Wipro and HCL. And while I was doing that, I could also do a small company on the side by Moonlighting, which many people don't know about. But it was interesting for me that I got uh, my entrepreneurship journey started with some entrepreneurs in India uh, from uh, HCL. And I think I also need to thank 
Arjun, uh, Arjun Malhotra, one of the co-founders of HCL is also a mentor to me. And uh, I was, I'm here in this country also because of some of the challenges that he gave us uh, in our early days at HCL when I moved from HCL India to HCL America. So that's where my entrepreneurial journey started. So I was at HCL uh, and we were, uh, we came here, we designed a multi-process system in India, which was a symmetric multi-process system using Motorola processors at that time. I don't know how many of you know about Motorola processors anymore, but anyway, so uh, that was our, uh, uh, you know, so we designed it in India, we wanted to come and sell here, and that's how the company HCL America got started, because today HCL is very well known for its consulting business, but back in 88 when we came here, it was to sell those computers that we designed in India. But sure enough, we realized that, hey, the the box that is acceptable to the Indian environment is not acceptable here. So we ended up doing some redesigning of the computer. All, and then we found a customer, we sold it, but that ended up, uh, you know, as it happens very easily in America, that, end up, that customer ended up filing bankruptcy. So within a, a sort of year or so, uh, the company had to pivot. And then the natural thing was, um, Arjun came in and said, hey, every, everybody should go back or they should figure out your own way to make revenues, right? So basically, we were forced into becoming entrepreneurs, uh, right? I mean, I, I think me and my boss together said, hey, let's start. You know, we are good at hardware design. I mean, I didn't know. I've not written any piece of code at that time. I said, hey, I'll become, uh, we both will start a electronic design business inside uh, our, basically hardware design business inside the HCL umbrella. So they let us alone. As long as we were not burning cash, they said, hey, you both can hang out here. So we did four years of uh, that and you know, networked with uh, lots and lots of semiconductor companies in the valley at that time. It was just the beginning of fabulous uh, revolution. And we were also the antenna for uh, uh, HCL, uh, mother HCL in India, because they were still selling hardware in India. So we used to talk to all these vendors here. So we, are, we had this advantage, unique position of being a buyer of components for India, but also we could design for other companies over here. So really gave me a foundation of moving from what I call a hardcore engineer to a business developer, right? So I was kind of being in front of the customers, trying to understand what they want. Um, and then we said, hey, let's just go and build a, a business out of it. Certainly with uh, uh, HCL's transformation into a mega services company, we could leverage talent in India too. And that business grew very, very well. But after three, four years into it, I said, hey, I want to get a, a different experience. So after, I think about, Mid-94, I think I got out to work for some couple of semiconductor companies. There again, it was phenomenal experience. I worked with a company called Opti, which uh, three uh, Taiwanese entrepreneurs and uh, one Indian entrepreneur, many of you may know, Raj Jaswa. So Raj was a, uh, uh, he recruited me into that because HCL and, um, and uh, Opti had some relationship. So that's how we got uh, uh, into Opti. And then I understood how the fabulous company works, the entire there's a new uh, sort of era that uh, industry started where, you know, you don't need to have a fab for you to make chips and sell. So, uh, you know, application specific, uh, uh, you know, integrated circuits became very popular. And we said, hey, um, you know, work on that for a couple of years. And then uh, that's the time I got to know about Thai, right? So uh, I attended my first Thai con in 1995. And I would say every year since then I've attended. I would not, I'll block my calendar for that period and uh, I'm, I'm involved with Thai a lot because that was really, and I got to meet who's who in that period at that time, right? There were uh, entrepreneurs, there was venture capital, there was lawyers, accountants, everybody came together to this Mecca once a year. And, uh, you know, it, it was a very good opportunity for fresh off the board guy like me who didn't go to school here to know about, uh, you know, how to start a company and what to do, what's the trending topic and all of that stuff. And every year, Ties tries a lot to do that. So I, I sort of uh, went into, um, you know, this fabulous industry that created, um, you know, some entrepreneurial bug in me. And I said, hey, uh, along with a couple of founders back from Opti Days itself, as I started attending Tycon, we said, hey, I need to do something on my own, you know, putting together a team. So, so that's what, uh, you know, I did, you know, a uh, bunch of us came together and I became an entrepreneur in uh, end of 1996, um, uh, created, uh, 
you know, as I don't know how many of you are in the circuit design or electronic design business, most of the circuits those days were dr uh, drawn, even chip design were drawn graphically. The AND gates, OR gates, all of those things were represented and there were connection diagrams done and then ultimately an EDA software will create a net list and then you go about designing the chips. But that's the time uh, people like Prabhu Goel who invented language-based uh, chip design process called uh, Verilog and VHDL. And uh, you know, we said, hey, let's, Verilog is a great thing and why don't we just uh, participate in that? So when the fabulous companies moved from hand-drawn designs to uh, you know, what I call uh, language-based design, I said, hey, I want to participate in the journey. So that was the discontinuity that we latched on to at that time. And uh, we created synthesizable building blocks. Um, uh, that was the intent. Uh, uh, and then we also wanted to uh, you know, build on our strengths. We, we used to know how computer design very, very well. And people were using uh, you know, computers and adding on different type of external interfaces to create networking boxes. So we said, hey, let's try to do electronic hardware design and chip design building blocks. And that was the uh, f fundamental idea behind uh, which uh, we started GDA Technologies. And uh, that's when, uh, that was idea, right? So then I remember meeting with uh, a very close friend of mine. We are still engaged. He's a very successful enterprise VP of sales, Matt Reddy. And uh, he and I were, uh, were at a conference uh, in uh, Taiwan. So in one of those evening bar conversation, I was, he was asking me, AGK, what are you going to do next? I said, hey, I'm already working towards starting a company. Uh, but Matt said, why are you doing it? And you know, I said, you know what, I want to be financially independent. I got you know, so many guys I've seen at Opti and HCL and you know, my first job. So I really think I want to be an entrepreneur. So he said, you know what, forget about all of that, right? I mean, I know money, making money should be that. What is the other purpose behind it? Why are you doing it? Have you really answered a question other than making money? Or what's the more than money reason for you to uh, start this company? So that really got me thinking. I said, hey, here I am. I know what I'm going to do. I've already rallied my team. Now I have to go look for a purpose. But thanks to Matt, I really thought. And I, I mean, if I look back, how did I come to America? I had no intent of coming to America back in 1988. One fine day, my manager asked me, hey, do you have a passport? I said, yes, I have a passport. Can you go to Singapore? I know. He said, because we need you to go and learn something in Singapore and come back to HCL Research and Development Group. I said, OK, I'll do that. When I'm in Singapore, my boss's boss asked me, he said, hey, can you go to America? I said, OK, I don't mind. If you want me to go, I'll go. So I just packed my bag, and uh, I came to America back in October you know, 1988. right? So I didn't have any sort of planned agenda in terms of uh, how I'd come. But one thing resonated with me at that time was, hey, we designed these uh, hardware products uh, in India, and we realized that we had to come here to make money out of it other than the small volume that we can produce in India and make money. So all the developers that I knew in India, hardware designers or software design designers, somehow by the time have come to the Bay Area. So I said, you know what, the purpose is I want to go and create at least 50 hardware designs, design jobs in India. That was so everybody. So when Matt's question resulted in, in me answering the, that purpose, I said, I want to create 50 jobs in India, and, and everybody laughed. You know, Thai community laughed, all of them laughed, and they said, hey, you cannot create hardware jobs in India. It's not possible, at least in the model that you're trying to do, because nobody knows RTL design in India. No EDA tools are being sold in India. What are you talking about? But we said, that's what we're going to do. And uh, you know, we started uh, our company. And then by the time we sold our company,